Well, Dr. Alberti, it's a pleasure to have you back at the Carnegie uh, International Nonproliferation Conference. So, uh, what's new? <laughs> now, we all know what's new. You've gone supernova. Uh, let me just read two sentences from the, uh, the no Norwegian Nobel Committee. It says in its declaration awarding you the Nobel Peace Prize, at a time when the threat of nuclear arms is again increasing, the Norwegian Nobel Committee wishes to underline that this threat must be met through the broadest possible international cooperation. This principle finds its clearest expression today in the work of the IAEA and the Director General. Uh, we, of course, are thrilled to ha have you receive this award. How has it uh, affected you? How has it affected the work that you're doing? Well, Joe, let me first say it's a pleasure and honor to be here today. And, uh, as Jessica mentioned, it's my annual pilgrimage to come here uh, to listen to you, to hear from you, and to tell you where we are, because we are very much partners in this enterprise. I think you are rightly said, uh, as Nobel Committee mentioned, I see the prize basically to, as an effort to emphasize the importance of dealing adequately with the number one security threat we face in the world at a time when arms control and, and non-proliferation is becoming out of fashion. You know. It also, to me, emphasizes the importance of multilateralism, and we are just part of that process. I don't think any of the problems we are facing today, whether countries trying to develop nuclear weapons, countries to, to do more subtle approach by developing fuel cycle, uh, the, the question of the physical protection of nuclear material, the desire by terrorists to acquire this material, the stagnation in nuclear disarmament, which creates a, absolutely a cynical environment. On all these issues, I don't think we can move an inch forward without putting our heads together, without working together in unity of purpose, and clear understanding that we are either going to succeed together or fail together. Wonderful. It, you, uh, you prepared some remarks for today's conference, uh, and you, you decided that you'd rather sit down and have a conversation Correct. here. We have posted your remarks uh, at the Carnegie Nonproliferation website, which, by the way, is proliferationnews.org. Proliferationnews.org. We have posted your remarks and everyone's remarks throughout this conference. Um, and, and we're going to talk for about uh, 15 or 20 minutes up here and then open it up for questions from, from the audience and from the, the media. In your prepared remarks, one of the first points you make is, is the question of how effective is verification? How, how effective are your efforts, are your inspections, how, how reliable are the inspections that you and, and your inspectors undertake in countries around the world today? Sure. Joe, as I've said always, uh, verification is as effective as you're allowed to, to be. Uh, it depends on what kind of mandate we have, legal authority. It depends on the technology we are, we are able to use. It depends on the compliance mechanism that is backing us. And it depends on information we receive. Uh, in short, the, the verification today is much better, 10 times better, than what we had in pre-1991 Iraq. But it is not where it is, where it is supposed to be. We still have 100 countries that have not joined the so-called additional protocol that gives us the authority required to look for undeclared activities. We still ha live in a shoestring budget. I think Joe told me it's less than the Ritzkin budget. You know? <laughs> That's uh, right. Your, your budget is $120 million yeah. a year. The Redskins' yeah. payroll yeah. is 117. Maybe I, I should. I don't know what Don Schneider gets out of that. But, well, but you, you're basically operating on the, on the payroll of the Washington Redskins. Absolutely. And maybe we should switch to the Washington Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> we, with trademark we, rights, yeah, you can make some money. <laughs> and you have 650 inspectors, 650 inspectors. Who, who are in charge of, of going to 900 facilities yeah. in 91 countries. Correct. How do you do it? Well, we try our best, cross our fingers. But when people malign us and say we're not effective, we're not efficient, they, look, they need to look themselves at the mirror. What sort of authority do we have? You know, what sort of budget do we have? Uh, what sort of compliance backing we get? Uh. In 1992, we reported North Korea to Security Council. 2005, North Korea said they have a Security Council. Uh, they have a nuclear weapon. When we reported North Korea to Security Council in 1992, we haven't heard from them until today. You, know. well, you, need, you need to understand that unless there is a serious 
message by the international community that we are going to back you in case of non-compliance, well, you get the sort of nonchalant attitude on the part of the unexpected countries. What can you do? So we try to use, as I told Joe Nye in, at Harvard last week, we try to use the soft power because that's all we have. But even soft power requires that we have the required pressure that would help us to do the work. Then, then, I sh then information. Uh, information is key to verification, Joe. Without knowing where to go, you know, in a big country, you know, uh, I'm lost. You know, and we don't until today have a system, a mechanism by which countries provide us in a, in a, in a steady way the information: who is getting what, who is denied what, where all the sensitive technologies are going. So, lots is still to be done. We're moving forward, but but we still could do much better. Let's just take a specific example, the one that's in the news and has been in the news for years now, Iran. You and the inspectors have been in Iran for about two and a half years. Can you tell us a little bit about the kind of cooperation you're getting from Iran, how you feel about your ability to, to, to verify the information they're giving you? Well, I think on Iran, we are now in a, there is a sea change in terms of our understanding of where the Iranian program is coming from. You know, we understand the extent, the nature of the program. We know that they have tried to master the entire fuel cycle. Uh, we are still have a number of outstanding questions we are trying to resolve. Uh, we are making progress, not with the extent, the speed I would like to see, but in fairness, we are also getting access beyond the confines of the protocol. A couple of days ago, we went to a military facility, for example, yes. this portion, which, which is a good sign. I've been telling the Iranian, the ball is in your court. You have been caught red-handed. Let me just ask sure. you about that. This was a site, there's been allegations that there was actual weapons work there. Correct. Now, this goes beyond your mandate. Correct. Your mandate is to, uh, is to look at nuclear materials, Correct. right? So now you're going to this site. Are you looking for nuclear materials there, or are you, have you broadened your own mandate to look at weapons design, fabrication, work, any hints no. of that kind our, of activity? Our mandate is, and this is, again, part of the limitation, our mandate is nuclear material focused. So if there is a parallel weaponization activities that does not have a nexus to nuclear material, I cannot go and, and, mm. and verify that. However, I am going to certain facilities on two bases, that if you have a, a, a testing site, for example, I would like to make sure that that testing site does not have nuclear material. So I still link it to nuclear yes. material. But in the case of Iran, for example, I'm trying to say, because of your record, give me more than my legal authority. I call it transparency measures, because the more redundancy I do, the more confidence I can build. And they have understood to some extent that message. I have been getting cooperation by going to facilities that goes beyond the protocol. I'm not saying that this is a legal authority, but I'm saying this is transparency measures yes. that would help us to build confidence. And, and unless I keep telling the Iranian authorities, unless we clarify the past, we cannot regulate the future. And the future is the more important aim we have, how to integrate Iran with the rest of the international community, with Europe, and ultimately with the United States. Well